You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Marion's Path. So the last place we left off, well, Gran was trying to uh, get us together with Marion. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to work out just fine. <laughs> I'm uh, eager to see where the relationship goes, though. I love that awkward kind of <sighs> innocent dating phase. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes. And let's jump right in. All right, alarm chain, you're up. All right, here we go. All right, I shall. She thank you for it, and be ever grateful. No woman wants a man lily gagging around with her feelings. <laughs> and we make a cute couple. You do, my dear boy. Your grand certainly wouldn't rem certainly wouldn't ramble idly about such things. She moves on to gossip and stories after that, giving me slight glances and smirks as she chitters from behind her teacup laced with whiskey. You know my good friend, Maggie Tight. She's up in arms about the neon sign Bulgar wants to put outside the pub. Can you imagine? That blazing glare. What a tacky sight. Grand, there's not even electricity in the town. And they best keep it that way. The Whist Club ladies are starting a petition to ban Neon from the town. How's he ever going to haul a gaudy mass over from Glasgow anyhow? What's that noise? You can't do it. Oh, be silly. Now Rabina, she's been going on about a, about the devil about she's been she's been going on about having the devil's time putting together everything for the church picnic. You know, if not for these old bones, I'd help out and attend. But it's hard enough on my back to sit in the pews for the length of the pastor's services. Much less I don't have bonny, much less I don't have bonny head bare hillside. Malcolm, you listening? About half, not lazily. That means if you're planning on going, you just have to find someone else to take with you. The girl next door, perhaps? I laugh. A sly matchmaking rascal is who I live with now, I see. Not that I'd complain about her intentions. I only hope they aren't a pipe dream. <laughs> Set it up, Gran. Do it. <laughs> Gran is hitch. <laughs> Alright. That evening as I tend to Hazel, my mind swirls. One thing, however, cuts through my musings to grab my attention. My nose twitches. Uh, how long has it been since, uh, since you last had a good bath, girl? Hazel huffs. I take that to mean ages. The musty odor of hay and, well, not hay, are becoming as overwhelming to my senses as anything I'm carrying around internally. Come, little lady. Let's get to scrubbing. <laughs> Cut. She's all wet. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I towed out a full pail of water, a dense bristle brush, and a tablet of lye. The water foams quickly, and I tackle Hazel's fur and mane, starting with her haunches. Hey, now, don't buck at me. Settle. You smell fresh as a daisy, or at least as pleasant as the bluebells you adore. Circling the brush in her thick undercoat, I try hard to think of anything other than Marion. Her smile, her eyes, her sweet figure. Should I say something to her? I promised Gran I would, but what? How? Maybe my confidant, maybe my confidant in rigueur, Miss Hazel, has some advice. Hazel, my heart but melts when I picture her, that Marion. It's like a ringing in my head, a constant tug, a pull at my brain. There's not much else to keep my attention, even your fine visage. The horse's head whips back, and I do believe an evil eye is cast my way. Alright, perhaps I was laughing, I was laying it on a bit thick. Don't fret, Hazel. You're still the apple of my eye, but I dare say Marion is the whole orchard. I smile to myself, knowing that my heart has probably doubled in the size in the brief time I've gotten reacquainted with my kind and beautiful neighbor. I'm guessing you've got not a lick of advice for me, eh? <laughs> As if on cue, Hazel knocks her head back and gives my jaw a fair slurp with her wet tongue. I drop the brush and consider dunking my head in the lie. Thanks, I, I think. Alas, I'm not sure Barry would respond so favorably to a big old slurp. <laughs> the scrub and rinse my obstinate beauty. Look over my work. She positively glows. You're a good dame, Hazel, an even better listener. Remind me to consult you for advice more frequently. Hazel glares, letting me know that she would prefer I do no such thing. Oh, God, what an attitude she has. Oh, we all love Hazel, though. Another struggle to get my horse back into the stable for the evening, and re reward myself with a tumbler of scotch back inside the home. I can hear Grand snores and decide to retire for the night as well. It's an evening of dreams. <laughs> dreams of summer wind flowers. Of the wind on my face and of Marion's hair blowing in the breeze like a window curtain. 
Every imagined movement feels closer to becoming reality. I sleep well, knowing that soon I may be able to make at least one dream come true. Oh god, I hope it does. Gonna do whatever we can to make that come true, ain't we boys and girls? Alright, it's turning today. Yes. Cat is over there sleeping on my soda bag. Being a fucking silly cat. Silly kitty. Alrighty. The next morning, I waked Gran's broad grin facing at me at the breakfast table. That's a smile wider than the lock, Gran. What have you been up to? What have you What have you got up your sleeve? Not a thing, Malcolm. Not one. I just need you to pick up a few things from the market today. The smile widens as she slides a silver coin across the table. Gran, I've plenty of money. Fret not. This is for something else. I've seen the spring in your step. It's been keeping you nearly. A, it's been keeping you nearly a, a foot aloft all week. Take this shilling and get a nice gift for Marion. A present to make her smile as broadly as I am. Cran, matchmaking is one thing, but subsidizing your grandson's relationships? Think of it as an investment in your future. In our future. I've only so many years left on this earthly plane, and still no great-grandchildren to dote on. I just about choke on my morning tea. G grandchildren Goodness, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Of course not, dear. I'm only suggesting you get our dear neighbor a little gift. Her smile is far more innocent than her intentions, of that I am sure. Alright, of that we have the say of the same mind. Any suggestions? Something small and memorable. A treasure with which she will never want to part. That's a lot of pressure, finding the perfect gift. Jewelry, dear. A charm. Bright, shiny, small. Something befitting of her sparkling nature. She will love it. Grand likely has a point. If I take her advice, I don't take her, I don't take her shilling. Sliding it back across the table. Very well. And to you I return this small shiny thing. No buts. Gran pouts, but I stand my ground. After I clean up the morning dishes, I kiss Gran atop the head, saddle up Hazel, and head to the town shop. <laughs> Ooh, okay. What do we got? The market is crowded as usual. While most stalls are geared toward produce and household goods, a few dabble in things for, for the missus. I keep an eye out for a small token or trinket to pass along to Barry, and if only to thank her for her kindness and warmth, and to cheer her up. She still misses Jesse something terrible, and Grace has been and Grace has been little help to ease the concern. Mind it couldn't hurt if the gift impressed Barry in a wee bit too. I do truly want want her to know I think of her constantly. It's a tall order. I wonder if the market is something that fits the bill. The gift must remind her both of me and my fondness for her. Hmm. Oh I wonder. Among stalls of bread, fruits, nuts, and sundries, a small row of charms catches my eye. Hmm. Ha! Ooh, oh, Yep, yep, that'll do it. That that matches her. It shines brightly like Marion when she smiles. A tiny silver cowbell, just small enough to fit in my palm. A hand reaches out for the trinket just as mine does. It pulls away when I pick up the bell. I was just going to recommend that one for you, Malcolm. Looks to have a bit of a magic to it. Now, Effie, it's so odd to encounter you here. <laughs> I look up when I realize it's Effie's voice. She's staring at me, plain-faced. Effie! How nice to see you again. How you've been? Fairly well, Malcolm. It's always a pleasure to see you too. You took off so quickly last week after church. I was hoping to run into you again to catch up. You... <clears throat> you were? She squints, as if in disbelief. Naturally, your friendly face is always a welcome sight. Effie does a quick curtsy. In giving. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. I cling to the miniature cowbell, rolling it around in my hand, letting my thumb brush against, brush across the sharper corners. It jingles whimsically. So, I thought you worked for the Milner for the Milner first time I saw you in the market stalls. Now I see you here with the ephemera. You get around, don't you? She laughs and nods. I float from place to place. Go where the wind takes me. I don't doubt you. You have a smile that could sell a broken oar to a fisherman. My word! You don't think I'm unscrupulous, do you? <laughs> Not at all. Just gently persuasive. As we talk, I look over the other baubles and trinkets. I still can't get past the one in my hand. It feels meant to be. Effie watches me closely. And the cowbell charm? You're going to get it? I love it. I'm definitely going to purchase it. Effie pauses and wrings her hands. It reminds you of someone special, doesn't it? Am I such an open book? Yes, very much so. She will like it. You think so? Well, I certainly would. A gift from a gentleman I'd always be appreciated and welcomed, that's for sure. How much for the cowbell? Five shillings? 
She gives me a knowing look. I root around in my pocket for the coin, for the coins, but Effie shakes her head. No need, Malcolm. It's on me. But the new owner be delighted to receive it. Perhaps even as delighted as you are of speaking of her. The girl smiles, but has, has a wistful look in her eyes. I nod and set down the money just in case. I can't walk off without leaving something. Take care, Effie. Good to see you once again. I take off to the market stalls and glance back. Out of the merchant at the booth pockets the coins before Effie can, and seems to ignore her in the process. She looks up at him and shrugs, and she adjusts her hat, brushes down her attire, and walks off into the crowd, disappearing as swiftly as she appeared. I can't figure that girl out. As much as that friendly face with that oversized hat and those charming glasses puts me at ease, deep down, something feels off. Something I can't quite put my finger on, but I don't dwell on it. Instead, I stock up on the other needed goods while keeping an eye out for an auburn, ha for an auburn head of hair. A sign of Marion. I wonder when I will see her next. My hand nervously fumbles with the tiny gift in my waistcoat pocket. What if I'm being too forward? Or worse, what if she thinks I'm calling her a cow? Don't be ridiculous, Malcolm. Marion's an understanding lass. She'll accept it for what it's meant to be. I hope. <laughs> I'm sure she will. Music loop. <laughs> My fingers are still fiddling with the trinket in my pocket with the when the McLeod's homestead comes into view. It came straight from home after dropping off the day's groceries. Crivens! I've not felt butterflies like this since the war. All right, Malcolm, keep the head and carry on. Best get this done before I get cold feet. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't know that, Malcolm. Now would Aw, there she is. Give it to her. Give it to her. Give it to her. Give it to her. Marching on, I find Marion scrubbing laundry outside. I duck in and see her, and I duck in and around hanging linens and bedsheets until I get closer to her. Her cheeks are flushed from work and being out in the sun. The freckles are painfully cute. Suddenly, I am struck with a case of the jitters. What if she doesn't like the gift? I can't, I can't just hand it to her. It looks like I'm not even trying. I want to make it a surprise. Oh, why did I think this through earlier? The laundry basket sits on the ground, full to the brim with cotton sheets. I could easily drop the necklace inside and wait for her to discover it. It's the best idea I can muster for a last-second plan. Oh, hello, Malcolm. Forgive me. I didn't even see you there. Oh, hello, Miss Marion. Such a fine day to be outside. It is. What brings you by? I didn't see you in town. I just wanted to check in and... <laughs> Marion looks away to clip his sheet to the line. Swifter than a hare, I slip the pendant underneath the first layer of cotton in the basket. Thought I could help you any way you see fit. Perhaps hang a few linens to dry. I gesture towards the basket, but she shakes her head. Those are clean and already dry. There's another basket of wet laundry by the door if you don't mind getting it. Oh, of course, um, I'll go get it for you. Marion doesn't notice the contents of her basket at all as she hefts it, if she hefts it my way and passes it off. This one is full. Can you leave it outside? Sure thing. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta find another creative way. And give me we receive. That didn't work. I drop the basket inside the doorway and rifle through to get to the pendant. No! Oh. Then I haul the basket of wet linens back to the lines, where I spot Marion's favorite cow, Fiona, weaving her hefty frame through the hanging laundry. Oh, Marion, she must give her cows free reign. No wonder they like her so much. It's a good thing it's just laundry, not a china shop. Fiona's horns get caught on the sheets, and it gives me another idea. I set the basket down and pretend to start clipping the fabric to the lines. Destinately, I slip the pendant around Fiona's long, curving horn. I can't wait to see Marion's face when Fiona clumps over. She's gonna go running off, isn't she? It ends up being a bigger mistake. Oh, God! Malcolm, can you help me reach the top? Grace tied the line too high for me, that imp. Here, let me get that for you. I stand behind Marion, grabbing hold of the clothespin and fabric. Our bodies press into each other, and I get a tickle on my chin when it brushes against her hair. My mind goes to mush. I tell I see Fiona ambling back to join the herd. The light catches the pendant, and I panic about how to get it back now. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. Any time. Uh, I'll just continue over here then, eh? I pin. I pin and clip, keeping, a, well, keeping one eye each on Marion and Fiona. The, he the heifer has rejoined her shaggy compatriots, and is recognizable only for the shiny object on her head. My hands wrinkle and chap from handling the damn cloth for so long. Finally, my savior comes in the form of Marion's little rascal of a sister. Grace shouts from the window. Marion, your bilberries are boiling over. What? Grace, take them off the fire. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, God. 
By the time Marion races inside, I'm squishing my way through a herd of two dozen cattle, shoving ribs and rumps around until I get to Fiona. <laughs> I take the pendant off her horn, thanking her for her efforts. Of course, I get nothing but a hearty huff in response. And they sure are fluffy. I'm back at my post by the clothesline when Marion returns, looking frustrated. That girl, I swear! Why can't she get anything right? All I have is a pot of burned bilberries and blue stains on the floor. I'm hot and sweaty from pushing around heifers, and Marion is red with anger from dealing with her sister. A new, blessedly simpler idea presents itself. Hey, Marion. How about a hug? It catches her off guard, but I can see the enmity quickly disappear. But, oh, of course, I, I could really use one. <laughs> Do it. Do it, you sly fox. We embrace. Her hugs are tender and sincere, like her soul, and I'm thrilled to finally have the gift placed where it should be. I let my hand linger under the charm, now hanging from her neck. <laughs> oh, she's gonna love it. Oh my, what, what is this? She fingers the necklace, causing it to jingle delicately. It's just a small gift. Oh, Malcolm, you didn't need to do that. Marion's already red face blushes even more deeply. Seeing you is a big enough present. <laughs> Likewise, but I found something at the market this morning that reminded me too much of you to pass up. It's a token of my appreciation. She lightens up brighter than the mid-morning sun. Oh, Malcolm, it's absolutely beautiful. How thoughtful. I know how attached you are to your herd, especially... <laughs> Fiona. That, yeah, that's the one. I glance over at my failed partner in crime, but she just stands there, a thin string of drool falling from her bottom lip. I'll cherish this, Malcolm. It's adorable and sweet. She pauses and looks into my eyes. Just like you. Kiss her, kiss her, kiss her, kiss her. And you. The wind starts blowing across the linens. I long to reach out to hold to her and hold her close. The fates are on my side as Marion takes a step closer to me, placing a hand on my arm and pressing her chest against mine. I inhale mostly from shock as she gets up on her tiptoes and kisses me on the cheek. Oh! Yes! It happened! Ha! <laughs> I did it! It's too much for me to let the moment pass, so I wrap my hand around the back of her head, keeping her up on her toes as I kiss her softly on the lips. She tastes of cinnamon and treacle, so sweet and intoxicating. I don't want to let her go, but inch by inch she drops back to the earth and her lips part. Beautiful moment, beautiful moment. I, I don't know what to say. I don't think I do either. We stare at each other until we both start laughing. I've been wanting to do that for quite some time, Marion. Thank you greatly for taking the initiative. Oh no, I sound like an old lady. Malcolm, thank you, thank you, you're amazing. I hope you know I, hope you know I sincerely feel the same way about you, I, I think. Oof, my back! <laughs> Marion reaches to her lower back and looks embarrassed. Oh, I'm sorry, Malcolm. I felt a twinge. A bit painful. Oh, oh, oh. the transformation. I'm also asking if she wants me to rub it, but it bite my tongue. What a forward thing to even think. Wanted me to look at it. Uh, no, I'll be fine. It's these blasted high clotheslines, Graysong. I've been straining all morning, reaching for them. Between that and my itchy head, you'd think I was ready to fall apart. Itchy head? Itchy head, too. Oof, what luck. It's bound to be the new soap I'm using. Strong stuff, but I'm always afraid of bedbugs getting in the house. Especially with whatever Jesse brings home from the pub. A fine group of flea bags she hangs around. I always say, Oh, I suppose I don't have to worry about that anymore, do I? Look at me, Prateron. I'm so nervous. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Marion is talking at a fast clip. Our hearts must both be beating at a frantic pace. Say, Malcolm, are you going to the church picnic tomorrow? It's nothing big, just the congregation getting together for a good time. Should be a bonny day for it. Is that tomorrow already? In my head, I weigh Grand's none too subtle hint against my most recent church experience. Yeah, sure. She's gonna be there, absolutely. As a matter of fact, yes. Oh, wonderful! If you wouldn't mind accompanying me, I would really enjoy that. Don't worry about food, I'll be bringing lots. And thank you for... She blushes again from ear to ear. Thank you for the cowbell. I will treasure it. And you. I beam and vow that next time I'll make sure to earn her affection through actions, not simply tokens. Marion, you are dear and a love. I can't wait to see you again for the picnic. We'll make it a grand time. That we shall. I consider kissing her again, but believe us both to be still reeling in surprise from the first. Instead, I bid my farewell and float all the way home. <laughs> oh, it's 
beautiful. <sighs> okay, I think I'm actually gonna pause it right here. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna pause it right here. All right. What's this one called? Something's changed. All right, we're getting into the real meat of it. Ah, uh, all right, that was a good episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Changeling Tale, Marion's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!